Hey guys, Red Pen and Winning here. Hope you're all doing well, having a really great day. Welcome to the Crypto Miner Bros YouTube channel. This is a specific how to set up an Ice River KS3. This is an 8.2 terahash model, around 33 to 3400 watts, depending on your environment, because the power consumption does change uh, dependent on the fans. But right now for me and my environment, it's about 3325 watts. So let's begin. For those that are wondering what is needed to run an Ice River KS3, even before you buy one of these things, it's gonna come down to your power infrastructure okay you're gonna need to run one of these guys on two 40 volt 30 amp circuit on a typical north american plug like a 15 amp 120 volt circuit it will not work it is not enough power because these are only able to go up to about 1800 watts but 80 percent rule it's about 14 1500 watts so understanding that this 120 volt plug will not be able to run a 3000 plus watt ASIC miner, big boy ASIC miner like the Ice River KS3. So you're gonna have to get a certified electrician to get you a 30 amp 240 volt circuit or something similar and then you will need a power distribution unit, okay? A PDU to run one of these Ice River KS3s or any big boy ASIC. So specifically the PDU that I have here, I bought off Alibaba. I'll show on the screen here and the seller whom I bought these from. These do have a few C20, C19 plugs here. Okay, and then I have a C19 to C20 cable that you're gonna need to order from, let's say, infinitecables.com. I'll show on the screen here uh, for the specific 12 gauge thick cable that will be needed uh, to power the Ice River KS3 because gauge matters a lot because you do want to have you know thicker cable so you have the capacity so that the cable doesn't heat up too crazy because there's a lot of power going through as you guys can see here right 3300 watts so once you have your power in order and now you are able to turn on your KS3 so let's talk about the unboxing here so it does come in a nice you know foam padded box and uh, this will be at the top of the KS3 like so. All right, and then you just have to lift it out and you're gonna wanna place your KS3 into an area where it's, I would say, well ventilated because this is pumping out a lot of heat right now. And also, you're gonna wanna be mindful of the sound that's gonna be coming out of one of these, which is about 71 decibels. Okay, so this is actually at 50% fan speed, which I will show you guys in the web GUI, because wherever you're gonna be placing this, it is gonna be generally loud, and it does make a lot of fan noises, as you can hear probably through the camera here, and will produce a lot of heat. So you do need an environment where you are going to extract a lot of that heat. So make sure you have provisions for that. So once you have it in the place that you wanna set it up, you're gonna now then wanna turn it on. Then you're gonna plug in the network cable, all right? It's gonna be hardwired, there is no wire Wi-Fi on the Ice River KS3 here, as well as the power cable. Then you're gonna switch it on, and then we're gonna go into the computer, we're gonna get the IP address of this so that we can log into the web GUI of the Ice River KS3, set up the miner, wallet address, or worker name, all that stuff, and get it mining as soon as possible. So, I will see you guys in the computer. Let's do that right now. Okay, so. The next steps in wanting to set up your Ice River KS3, you're gonna need a Caspa wallet. Now, there are many different wallets out there, but for me personally, I highly recommend using the KDX wallet. This is their full node software, which you can run on a Windows environment, Mac OS, or even Linux as well, okay? So just install that. You can then get your receiving address from the wallet that you're gonna use for your Ice over KS3. Another alternative wallet, which I recommend, is called the Tangem wallet. Another great option for self-custodial wallet for Caspa. All right, now the next step is you're gonna wanna install something called either Advanced IP Scanner or you're gonna log into your home router uh, to essentially get the IP address of your Ice over KS3 that's already turned on, all right? So I actually have an example here, Advanced IP Scanner. Most notably here is when you wanna hit scan, okay? Um, the IP addressing is probably gonna be different uh, depending on your network. It should auto-populate. For most common residential home miners, it's gonna be 192.168.0.1, 
dash 254, whatever the range is going to be. So you just have to click scan and it should scan your network and then you should find the IP address uh, tied to the ICE server. In most cases, most people probably have one singular subnet and that's going to cause a lot of different, <laughs> a lot of IP addresses and devices. So you're just going to have to go through, copy the IP and also then put that into the uh, web browser. All right, so once you get the IP, you're going to want to pop that in and you're going to be met with the login screen. Okay, so here is where I'm going to type in admin. This is all default. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the password. So password is one through eight. Okay, numbers. Log in. We're going to be met with the dashboard now of the Ice River KS3. So I've already had mine running here, but just as the next step, okay, for setting up your Ice River KS3. You're going to want to check to see if there is a firmware upgrade. Okay. This is where on the ice server's website. Okay. iServer.io. If you go to support and then we're going to go to tutorial. Okay. And here's where you're going to see uh, firmware download at the bottom here. Click on that link and it should take you to firmware downloads. So occasionally uh, ice river should have some firmwares. Uh, sometimes they don't. But you can see here for the KS3, there was one recently, just like a month ago as of recording this video. I've already gone ahead and updated that, but you're going to want to download the firmware. Okay, download. And then you're going to go back to the ICE server and you'll see the tab on the machine itself. Go to firmware upgrade. And then you're going to select that file, select the one that you just downloaded it and then update. And that should take about a couple of minutes and it should restart itself. And then you can go back into home. All right, then once you've done that, if you need to firmware update it or not, most cases you probably don't need to, but just, you know, giving that information there. Next part is you're going to go to mining settings. This is where you're going to input your mining pool, the wa worker wallet address and password. So let's start first with the pool mining pool. So there are many different Caspa mining pools out there. Okay. And uh, you'll always you know fundamental thing about crypto mining is about keeping decentralization. So what it means by that is spreading out the hash rate amongst all the different mining pools. So F2 pool right now has about 40.9% of the network hash rate. That's quite a bit. So definitely don't use F2 pool. Try to spread it out, you know, amongst lower hash rate pools, uh, you know, to keep the decentralization. And so, but for this example, I'm just going to show you guys here. I'm actually mining on caspa-pool.org. And so if you go into their website, just as an example here, okay, you can see uh, all the information here. And uh, if you want to start mining, okay, in most cases, most mining pool websites will show start mining and you want to choose your location. So in our, in our case here, I'm going to click on North America and you're going to want to copy these pool addresses here. Okay. So we're not, I already did that, but I'm just going to paste it in there. And then as well, you can populate pool two and pool three as well, if you want. And just as a backup, okay, these other two pools here, EU one and BR one, uh, these are just, you know, other mining pool. All right, we can do it for this example. Uh, just backups, just in case. Okay. Next part is you're going to want to put in your Casper wallet. So once you've gotten that from either KDX or Tangem or whichever wallet that you're using, you're going to get the receiving address and you're going to copy that into the wallet. Okay. Then after the wallet, you're going to want to press uh, type in period and then a worker name. Okay, worker name could be anything you like, but you know, I like to keep mine short, short. I just call it KS3. Okay, then you're gonna copy the exact same thing over to the other workers as well. Okay, the other uh, wallet worker. And that's it. Okay, that's all you gotta do. Make sure you put password X. I put X, you can put one, two, three, whatever. And then you're gonna hit save. So I'm gonna save that. And then it's, if you, if you go back to home, it's going to then, start mining. It should start mining right away. Okay. One thing. Okay. So once that's going, uh, what I like to do, if the, if the ASIC is too loud, depending on your environment, I highly recommend uh, checking out the temperature. So anything under like 55 degrees Celsius, which mine is right now under 50, um, which is pretty good. I actually have my fans set at 50%. So under the mining setting, you can change this to whichever number you think is, you know, good for your environment and also make sure you watch the temperatures. Um, but normally it would not be just running at a hundred percent fan, which is really loud. Uh, so I am running this at home, but 50 for 50% 50 fan speed seems to be pretty good uh, for where I am right now, even though, yeah, it's kind of, you know, coming up winter time here. So it is colder. Hey, mind you, but the fans are running a little bit lower. 
Okay, so there you go. That's that's it. And you're already mining. All the mining pools are entered, your wallet and stuff, and it should show up on your Caspa, whatever, whatever pool that you're mining, okay? And most cases, if you're choosing a mining pool, uh, you can look at the dashboard simply by entering the wallet address, okay? Enter your miner address here at the top, just as, a, as an example. So many different mining pools out there. Just definitely choose one that's like closest to you, latency-wise, and then... Yeah, that's it. Okay guys, so that concludes the how to set up a iServer KS3 video. Hopefully this was informative to you and if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these, link down below to CryptoMinerBros.com as well as use offer code REDPANDA for $50 off as well if you decide to purchase one of these. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Crypto Miner Bros. I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one. Peace out.